here. Lord, I thank you that you're here in our worship and in our conversation. I grew up with, of course women do this. This is what women do. I had zero glass ceiling. I had no like impediment on my gender in the way of serving Jesus. To the point that we never even asked, like when we moved here, I never asked the pastor of the church we were coming to what his views on women were, because I naively thought it was done and over. Like that's not even an issue. So over here that mattered, it mattered a lot. So I spent like five years in total desolation. But I had the great role of being pastor's wife, right? So pastor's wife still gets you in the room. A lot of times you don't get to say anything, but you're in the room. And so I still felt like I could be a little bit a part of it, but inside of me, I was dying because I knew like I'm not, I was never made to be a pastor's wife. Like I'm a pastor, but then we ended up starting a church. And we started it with me being the lead as well as my husband. We did it together. I was the only girl in the room most of the time. And when you're the one girl, it's actually a really easy position to be in. Uh, but a friend of mine challenged me five years ago and she's just like, are you content to be an anomaly? Like, really? Is that just going to be the legacy of your life? Is I'm the chick that the guys tolerate, but they still don't believe that women can do this. Um, She's like, or are you going to actively make a pathway for women who feel called to ministry, but don't know where to go, don't know how to do it? How are we gonna use your position of influence, not only to make it good for you, but to make it good for women everywhere? Uh, so Sailor grew out of that mission to be able to say, look, it can't just be about me. Uh, I, and now, you know, my whole perspective has shifted. And so for us, many years as I get to be pastor of this church. Like the enduring legacy that I want to leave is that there is scores and scores and scores of women and men that have been ordained in this church and have been sent out to do what God has called them to do all over the world. And what do you do when you're a lot, you have this plan that you think your life's gonna look like and one conversation, one phone call, one accident, one something seems to completely derail all of the things that you had planned for your life. He had a, um, a blood clot that just went straight to his heart. He had a heart attack and died. And, and we named this church life on purpose, not like good life or abundant life or best life or magic life or sparkle rainbow life. Like, no, we named it life because life happens and sometimes life isn't great. Sometimes it's not amazing. Sometimes it's really, really hard. And so we, I thought, you know what? This is our church. It's called life and death and grief are a part of life. And if I run away now, then everything we've fought for, everything we've built here is lost. And I'm not prepared to do that. My kids and I made the decision to stay and I took over. I have always led Sailor. I have always been really passionate about it. But again, I've been standing on that stage telling women that they can do it. Um, all the while while having 100% the support of my husband. But now, this year, I feel like what I've been talking about in theory for the last four years, I'm now living out in reality, where I am pastoring a church as a woman without a safety net. I, I'm doing it by myself. As a woman, I am leading a faith community in Columbus, Ohio, and I believe that um, it is good and right, and that God is in it. We will sing